Good morning from my office on this chilly Saturday morning. It's nice out there. The sun's there, but it's a little chilly. Uh, nothing bad, but uh, refreshing is probably a great word. And I hope you are off to a great Saturday morning. Get your uh, tea or your good brew going and uh, enjoying the Saturday morning. And uh, this week has been a, a little bit up and down with the weather. It's been all warm. Uh, and uh, praise the Lord for that. I enjoy the summer feel. And growing up in uh, Newfoundland, if we would have got a week like we just had, it would have been a good summer. Not just a good week, it's just a good summer. <laughs> and so it is very good. Uh, I'm enjoying it. And summer doesn't officially start till next Sunday, according to... Uh, whoever puts that stuff together and uh, and so we're excited about that and the warm weather and uh, praise the Lord for it keep praying for our missionaries uh, and uh, their needs uh, at this time you know we get to enjoy this uh, digital format uh, and people can watch they can comment they can connect um, without any fear of communicating uh, Christ, his message, Christian walk. But some of our missionaries are in places where they can't do this. If they did this, they would be removed, Some maybe even put to jail, uh, but at the very least removed from the country. So we praise the Lord for the freedoms that we do have. And in some other of our missionaries, they don't have access. Their countries are fine. They won't have a problem with that uh, message being proclaimed, but they don't have access to the technology uh, to push that out there. Uh, so it, uh, we praise the Lord for what we have and, uh, we pray for our missionaries. Uh, I know brother Stan, I was talking to him and, uh, he, he, his church is opening up again. Uh, so he's asking for prayer for that. And at the end of the devotion, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's coming forward for us on Sunday services as well. So, I'm um, excited about seeing those things come together. And I hope you'll stick with it uh, to the end, and we can uh, talk about that uh, at the end. All right, so the, for the next couple of Saturday mornings, we're going to examine um, Esther. Okay, so if you got your Bible handy on your iPhone, whatever, we're going to go to the book of Esther. And uh, now Queen Esther didn't go through quarantine like we are, or any kind of self-isolating measures that we have in uh, experience now. I'm thankful that we have social circles now. Woo! You know uh, those poor those folks in those social cir uh, circles are going to get hugged like never before. Okay, people who probably aren't even huggers are going to be hugging. Okay, uh, so she didn't face any of those things that we are facing, but she did face isolation at the top uh, in the king's court. She was the only one who cared about her people, the Jewish people. So she, she, we can, uh, the idea of being alone uh, at the very top, we can uh, see that in her life. And I think we can, we can learn some great uh, things from her life about that. So this morning, I really want to do just a flyover as such of um, the book of Esther. I know a couple of years ago, I was able to go and fly over Toronto uh, with brother uh, Dale Tao. And uh, it was really neat to see from that perspective I think we were about 15, 1800 feet above, and it was really neat, but uh, we weren't getting too much detail, so I just wanted to go on a flyover of Esther to just kind of help us, and then next Saturday, we'll kind of look at some more principles, specific ones, uh, to help us understand what the Lord was able to do, do with her life. So Esther is the only book in the New Testament, or sorry, is only one of two books uh, in the New Testament named after a woman, Ruth is the other one. Uh, so just so you can help you understand on the timelines when this took place, the story that of the book of Esther took place about 60 years after the Jewish people were allowed to return to Jerusalem. So that was under King Cyrus. He let them to go back. <clears throat> so that's about 60 years before Esther. And then about 35 years before Nehemiah would go back with uh, and, and rebuild the walls. Just so you kind of get a a grasp of where this is and timeline. Uh, a key word to understand in Esther is providence. Providence, which literally means to provide in advance. God certainly provided in advance uh, for Esther as she was. He, God used her 
as a human instrument to save his people. Now, I understand he used supernatural, but he used her <clears throat> as that instrument. So, providence. Uh, Jew, uh, Esther was a Jewish woman living in Persia. Her name means star. Uh, and her older cousin, Mordecai, actually took her in and took care of her. In Esther chapter 2, verse 7, uh, it says, His uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So she, she, he took her in. <clears throat> and uh, we don't know why her, or from what her parents died from. We just know that they died. And uh, when uh, there was a beauty pageant, for lack of a better word, in the Persian Empire, she was entered or she got involved with it. <clears throat> and uh, God used that way for her to become queen. And Mordecai told her, don't tell anybody about your Jewish heritage. Don't say a word. Now, Mordecai, <clears throat> he told people, people knew he was a Jew, but he told her, don't you, don't you tell anybody. Uh, Esther was, I, well, even from the scripture I just read, she was a beautiful lady. Uh, I believe she had an engaging personality. Uh, she, she won the heart of the king. Uh, as you Aziris or Erxes is another term or word to describe him, uh, name that he went by. Uh, and he chose her after foolishly disposing Queen Vashti. And uh, just think about this. The king could have had anybody, any virgin in the whole kingdom of Persia. But he chose Esther. Now, just to give you a little grasp of how big the kingdom was, it was massive. In this river, to the east, all you could look on a map and it ran up then towards the uh, Aral, Caspian, Black Sea, into the Mediterranean. Mediterranean was definitely a border for the uh, empire. Uh, it possessed Egypt as well to the south. It 5.5 million square miles. Up until that time, it was the largest empire ever. Now, it would be shadowed later by other empires, but up until then, nothing was bigger. So then uh, there's always, uh, in this story, there's the wicked scoundrel. And that was um, Haman. Haman comes into play. He's an extremely vengeful and extremely proudful advisor of the king. <clears throat> he hated Mordecai because he wouldn't bow down to him. And so he plotted to destroy the Jewish people because he knew Mordecai was a Jew. Uh, I guess that was hidden. It was never put together, I guess that Mordecai had taken care of uh, Esther. Now, in chapter one of Esther, it talks about how he checked, or chapter two, sorry, uh, how Esther, Mordecai would check on Esther daily. Uh, so the reality is that that was missed by Haman. Uh, and so he plotted to, to destroy the Jewish people. Uh, actually, in Esther chapter three, verse eight, it says, and Haman said unto the king, as you heirs, there's a certain people scattered abroad, dispersed among the people. In all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. Uh, and he was convincing. Uh, I think in other areas, he was uh, a good advisor as Osiris. Uh, it was this area. I'm sure he didn't do right all the time. I'm not saying that. But in this area, uh, he hated the Jews, and he convinced the king with the power that he had, the influence, uh, and the king handed over the ring as such to say, okay, go ahead, make your plans. And the Haman then announced a government issued edict of genocide against the Jewish people and used all the royal uh, ways of transmitting that law. So the Holocaust in the Second World War was not the first time uh, the old devil tried to rid the world of Jewish people. He has not stopped pursuing this since then either. Uh, Anti-Semitic activity in our world today is through the roof. Uh, and it's absolutely wrong. It's disturbing. It's it's a sin. It's wicked. Uh, it should never be a characteristic of a born-again believer. No way. It's that, that, that is wrong. Hatred of anyone is wrong. Uh, we're looking specifically at anti-Semitic right here, uh, Jewish people. Uh, and we need to be encouraging all races. We need to be reaching out. To the Jewish people, we need to be praying for them. Uh, I believe Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 is still re relevant for us today. 
and I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that uh, curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And reality is, all our families have been blessed by Jewish people. Uh, it's it's amazing. That's a different story, but a uh, different topic. I'm moving along with Esther. So what could the queen do when she found out about this? Something had to be done, right? I mean, she just couldn't sit at home and let this all transpire. Uh, you know, the king had not requested her to show up uh, in his presence for a month. Uh, Esther 4.11 sacks about that. For I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. Of all the Jews in the realm of Persia, and it would seem to indicate by the commands that were given, you know, they were spread out throughout the, the empire. She was the only one that had access to the court and the king of Persia. Now, I know Mordecai was close, but he did not have the same influence as Queen Esther. And Mordecai persuades Esther, you need to talk to the king on behalf of all the Jewish people. Everybody need all the Jewish people need you to, to stand up. You're in a unique place, okay, Esther. Silence is not an option here. And uh, in one of the most uh, well-known passages, and it's definitely a key verse for Esther, Mordecai speaks of God's purposeful timing of her to be in that position. Esther 4.14 says, For if thou altogether holdest thy, pe thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? In other words, Mordecai lets Esther know Hey, the Lord created you beautiful. You are now in a place of extreme importance, uh, and you need to say something. The reason God created you, this is it right here. Uh, for a time is this. Don't go. let it go to waste. And uh, Esther uh, knew that going into the king in an unsolicited ma uh, manner, just showing up, could end up in a death sentence. She could die. And anyone coming in the king's presence, queen or not, without being asked, they could be executed. So what does she do? She she makes a plan. <clears throat> uh, she prays about it. She fasts about it for three days. And uh, then she puts on her royal robes, does her approaches to the king. King accepts. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more we could say. I'm doing the flyover today. Uh, and then tells the king of Haman's plot against her. The Jewish people are saved. The king's rulers and officers step up and they protect the Jewish people. Another law is passed uh, by the king. Uh, Haman is hanged on his own gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Esther receives the estate of Mordecai. Mordecai is lifted up. A great level of leadership is bestowed upon him. The Jewish people are saved. The Jewish people still celebrate this event, and it's called Purnum, uh, and the next one is in February 21st, 2021. Uh, so they still celebrate this deliverance. This was a miraculous deliverance, and they still celebrate it. So next Saturday, uh, we will really dive into some principles, but I kind of want to lay the scene out just so, uh, because there's no way I'm going to be able to touch on all those things next week, and who knows, it might go in a third week, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but the reality is, it just kind of helps us understand. And, you know, you got this week. Hey, read through Esther, uh, and it's 10 chapters. Yesterday morning, I went to visit a friend. And then in my car ride to go visit that friend, I listened to all 10 chapters of Esther. So it doesn't take that long to listen to it. Uh, you, I mean, it just helps you understand the concepts better. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that so you're more prepared for next week. Uh, so just uh, let me encourage you to get in that book and read up uh, some more on it. All right, so just some uh, announcements as we go forward. I I'm sure everybody's heard now that the government has allowed us to, as churches to open up to 30% capacity, which is fantastic, which is faster than a lot of churches thought would happen. So we're moving that direction. We will not be having service on Sunday. I know some of you will be disappointed about that. But we are not ready here. This is not our building, and we're helping Malton Baptist Church uh, get it prepared. So all of our churches, there's actually three churches that use this facility. Uh, so we want to understand the guidelines, and they were not issued till later this week. 
and, and things of that nature. So we want to work in cooperation uh, to get all the things done, you know, have the right protocols in place. I understand we all know the, the physical distancing. Okay, we're not social distancing at church. When we do get back, it's physical distancing, all right? We still need to socialize. We still need to talk and things, but we'll have that. And then there's hand sanitizers that need to be got. And that stuff is like bars of gold right now. <laughs> so uh, so there's lots of details. And on top of that, uh, we have to get our up uh, on, you know, our online services available as well. Uh, that's something that we'll continue doing indefinitely. That I think that's just part of what church will be for good. Uh, so we have to get that those things set up. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, work behind the scenes that uh, need to take place. And again, I, I was involved with a lot of different meetings, Zoom meetings and things. And this was quicker than what was anticipated by authorities and other jurisdictions and those involved uh, with health uh, safety proce um, processes and things. Uh, so I, I know some churches were a little surprised that maybe not quite ready. And uh, that's fine. We, we're still going to have church on uh Sunday. We're still going to have Sunday morning, Sunday evening. It'll just be online for now. And so just, I know you might be disappointed, but we want to do it right. Uh, last thing we're going to do is jeopardize anybody's health. Uh, hey, in the Peel region, the region that a lot of us live in, uh, there's pretty close to 5,500 cases of COVID. So it's, it's, there, it's around us and we need to be safe. We need to be following these guidelines, uh, health and safety guidelines for ourselves. Um, and, you know, as we get closer to that, uh, we will inform people of different things. And obviously going forward, if you're not feeling comfortable, don't come. If you're feeling sick, stay home. All right. And we'll re reiterate that as we go along. Uh, there is no need for heroics. Okay. To come to church. Uh, I mean, can you imagine if you come to church and you're coughing? Everybody is going to be looking at you. All right. Don't come to church if you're coughing. Bad idea, okay? Uh, so uh, at any rate, we'll as we get closer to that, we'll let you know. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a little ways away. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. It's not gonna happen next week either. Uh, but we're looking on June the 28th uh, in the evening. So we're not gonna actually come into the building. What we're gonna do is you come into the parking lot, come around, and we are gonna have uh, some gifts for you. Uh, so by that time, well, Mother's Day's already passed. Father's Day's would have passed. Uh, graduates uh, still need to receive their goodies and things. So we're going to ask you to come through and we'll have bags of goodies for everybody. We're not going to leave anybody out. Uh, you come through and we'll give you those things. We'll interact with you. That's going to be on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, we're going to say three to five. Uh, so we'll, we'll reannounce that obviously as we get closer. I mentioned that so you can put it on your calendar and things. So you don't get out of your car or anything. It's just a matter of going through. We'll speak to you, talk to you. And that idea is that from three to five, so people can kind of stagger it so we don't have everybody showing up at three. Uh, so just come through, say hello, get your goodies. And in that bag that we'll give you will be guidelines upon what needs to be done when you come to church and things of that nature. It's going to look different. I'm just going to be honest with you right now. It's going to look different, but I am looking forward to meeting together. And again, at 30% uh, capacity, so probably like 70-odd people uh, we can have in at a time. So there's going to be a process for that as well. So we're working all those things out. Uh, so we would appreciate your prayers. Uh, just trying to work everything out. And again, we've never done this before. So we want to try to get it as close, as right as we can the first time. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then uh, tomorrow, again, 10 and 5. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be going through John. And, and then on tomorrow evening, it's Daniel chapter 7. And we'll be looking at uh, the vision of the beasts that Daniel had. Really the beginning of uh, information about end times and prophecies and things. So uh, you can read uh, John chapter 5. We're going to look at the first story there in John chapter 5 tomorrow. And then Daniel chapter 7 will, kind of, again, kind of fly over that. Uh, so uh, if you want to get ahead and read a little bit, and we'll have a quiz tomorrow night as well. Uh, so uh, we'll look forward to that. And let me encourage you, if uh, you have not, uh, or I shouldn't say have not, if you have been considering enrolling in Faith Bible Institute, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, it's a great program. 
Uh, I have sat in on classes here, and I have learned things. It's not to say I know everything. I went to Bible college for five years. Uh, there, he, he does a great job. Brother Yates does a fantastic job of communicating the message of the Word of God, the Old Testament, New Testament doctrines, things. does a fantastic job. Uh, so if you're, if you're local here and you would like uh, to be involved with that, please reach out to us, part of our church family. Uh, reach out to us. And I think it'll be immensely helpful. Now, you might say, well, we don't know if we're going to be allowed to have that many people in the room. Yeah, well, we'll get there in August. Uh, they did for this past semester allow folks to do on do their studies at home. Uh, but obviously, getting together is the way most it mostly works. Uh, but So don't let that be a stumbling block because you don't know what's going to take place. You'll still learn lots if there is still some sort of quarantine going on or isolation steps or measures. I would really encourage you to do that, all right, to sign up. And I believe it's July 1st is the sign-up date for the fall semester. Uh, I think it would be a big encouragement. You would learn so much. It would help you greatly in your Christian walk. All right, folks, so if you do have any questions uh, about coming up days, you can message me, uh, mess email the church, that's fine. We'll get back to you. But just keep in tune with us. We'll let you know what's happening and we look forward to getting together. And hey, let spend some time this week looking into Esther uh, and preparing our hearts uh, for the devotion for next week. All right. Have a great one. Take care.